Most people get rich in RimWorld through drugs and guns, but these methods are immoral. Instead, I want to get rich by helping people. So today, I will be getting rich through clothing the cold, feeding the hungry, and solving the planet's blood shortage. Our CEO, Katza Kronkenwagen, has spent the last few years building up a modest settlement and started tackling the planet's hypothermia problem. It gets cold on RimWorld, so we produced some nice warm parkas and built a little shop to sell them to the residents of the planet. And we've done quite well for ourselves, accumulating over $145,000 in wealth. But those 145 bands isn't enough to be rich, so we're gonna have to step it up. And the first step is changing our clothing production. As of right now, we're making parkas out of cloth, sourced from cotton plants. But since the planet can sometimes get a bit nippy, let's just say it isn't ideal for the cotton plants to grow. We could use hydroponics basins to grow the cotton, but there are two issues. One, we haven't researched them. And two, I don't want to. So we're not gonna do it. But we have to solve this problem so the innocent people of this planet can survive the harsh winters. I could use leather, but it is in short supply. Now you might say, just butcher and use the leather from your yaks. Well, Krogenwagen likes his yaks, so killing them is a no-go. Wait, I've got it. Up until now, when raids show up, I have been burying the bodies of my fallen enemies. Instead, I could butcher them and use their skin to make my clothes. But the obvious first step is to burn my old inventory and my cotton fields. Hey, stop it. Let the flames engulf the fields. You two, stop saving the cotton. Now, isn't this much better? On second thought, maybe it wasn't the best business decision as our valuation has plummeted. I don't think it's anything to worry about as once we slice up some people and get enough human leather, we begin production on our new line of parkas Introducing the Krakenwagen Fall Collection. Well, it's actually summer, but we'll start selling them in the fall. These babies retail for an affordable $410. And aren't these the most comfortable jackets you've ever worn? <laughs> you just gotta ignore the mood debuff from wearing someone's flesh. Interestingly, Krakenwagen doesn't have the debuff. Maybe it has something to do with him being a psychopath. He might not care that much about people, but he still loves his yaks. And when an unthinkable disaster struck in the form of yak flu, Krogenwagen will tend to his poor babies. We have a problem. Our new clothesline is super popular, which actually isn't the problem. The problem is that we don't have very many parkas in stock. We ran through our human leather pretty quickly and only have 30 left, so we need to restock. And luckily, some inventory was delivered. Unfortunately, we only made about three jackets from them for a new total of six. The company's gonna find a new way to get more human leather. The easiest way to get more materials would be to raid the tribal bases to our north or the pirates to our south. But we only employ three security professionals at the moment. So in order to pull off a successful raid, we need a plan. A plan that consists of uninstalling our base's batteries and defensive turrets. Hopefully, we don't need either of those. Eh, they'll be fine. We were gonna load the batteries and turrets onto the Yaks, but we got a quest that promised us some raiders. Nice! I guess we'll reset up our turrets, and by the time we finish, the quest expires. All right, back to plan A, I guess. Let's re-uninstall the turrets, gather the yaks, and load our supplies onto them. I bet you thought the yaks wouldn't have a purpose, besides being cute. I mean, that is their main purpose, but we use them for work too. We set out towards the closest pirate base, and when we arrived, I noticed they weren't exactly human, as they're covered in fur. I hope they still count and give us some human leather, otherwise this whole thing would be a waste of my time. We set up the batteries to power the turrets, and then we take our collective naps halfway through the preparation stage. And this security guy is even sleeping on top of a yak. The next morning, we finish setting up our trap when suddenly a waste pack infestation appears. Oh boy, when these bugs pop out, they'll finish the pirates for us. That's not a bug, it's a cocoon. A dormant cocoon. So now we have to wait for the pirates to fall into our trap. 
And when the pirates finally stupidly rushed out of their base, our turrets engaged and mercilessly slaughtered the pirates. <laughs> Except this guy, whose will to live was mightier than the bullets I threw at him, and he eventually escaped. When the fight was over, we began dismantling our turrets and batteries, when our main base was attacked by a mech hive. I was kinda hoping this wouldn't happen while our security team has half our defenses, so hopefully the remaining turrets can handle it. Is that a body we missed from before? Ah, we could've used that to make some jackets. With the mechs defeated, we reformed the caravan, loading the bodies of our enemies, and strangely they aren't contributing to the caravan's weight, but they are contributing to food. Interesting. When the caravan arrives back at the company HQ, we unload the yaks and store the bodies in our freezer. Their description says they're human, so hopefully they count. And yes, these dog people do give us human leather. And with the new source acquired, we produce more clothing ready for sale. And look at this graph. We have regained the wealth we lost when disposing of our old cloth jackets. So it wasn't a bad business decision, I think. Our last resource acquisition gave me a good idea. Since the bodies were counted as food, I thought we could expand our mission of helping people by feeding the hungry. A lot of people on this planet are starving. Uh, Krokenwagen, aren't you gonna feed this man? No, don't give him medicine, he needs food. And he died of starvation. Cool. Well, actually he died of an infection that we didn't treat quick enough, so the medicine was actually the correct thing to give him. But my point still stands, people need their food. The easiest way to feed the planet would be to use our excess supply of potatoes and yak milk, but the people don't need those. They need protein to fight off the deadly raiders. That is why we will use meat, and not just any meat, human meat. Every time we carve up a person to make parkas, a byproduct is human meat, and we have a lot in storage. Before we begin production of human meals to sell, we need to prepare a little. First, we need to hire more employees for the company, whether that is through raid recruitment or uh, buying out their contracts. We hired three new employees, two to cook the food and a new vice president in charge of food operations, Mr. Big Bucks. Why was Mr. Big Bucks given this high-ranking position? Oh, it must be because he has extensive knowledge of cooking slash food. <laughs> no, it's because he's a smooth talker that can make a sale. In order to prepare for our new business segment of food production, we're going to remodel the store. It'll be more efficient to just sell our jackets in bulk to our neighbors anyway. We tear down the shelves, build up dining tables, and install a new freezer. And finally, our restaurant is complete, but it needs a name. Perfect. Once our chef's finished cooking and filling our freezer with cannibal meals, Fazoli's has its grand opening. Now it is Mr. Big Buck's job to smooth talk customers into throwing away their morals and eating human flesh, and then paying 500% more than market value for the meal. And some of our employees partook in the fine dining of Fazoli's, including our CEO, Kronkenbagen. However, they did get a debuff after eating the meals, so I should probably ban my employees from eating here again. It's best we stick to our potato and yak milk meals. Other than that, Fazoli's is a sweeping success. With our ever-growing loyal customer base, we have achieved a new company value of a quarter of a million dollars. We are well on our way to becoming rich. But we do have a problem on the, uh, meat procurement front. When new supplies show up, they can easily breach our outer defenses, as we have a pretty open setup. This leads to workplace accidents. I don't want to pay any more workers comps, so we need to set up a more efficient defense layout. We launch our new strategic growth initiative to build a wall around our entire base. Our amazing employees work through nice weather and bad. And here at Ethical Corporation, our CEO works alongside his employees doing the jobs usually deemed beneath his position. Except the, uh, butchering of people. Krokenwagen is a moral person, so he wouldn't do that. When the wall was finished, we began construction of four kill boxes, or as the boys in marketing call them, meat grinders. Our future jackets and fast food are forced to slowly walk their way through a maze until they exit a tiny opening to face our capitalist turrets. 
And if there are enough enemies, they get backed up and have to wait patiently in line to be turned into a coat. This has made our whole meat collection process much easier and has cut down on injuries. And this implementation has led the company to a golden age of helping people. With Fazoli's now the number one restaurant on the planet and a steady supply of jackets being sold, we have combated hunger and hypothermia and raised our wealth significantly. We even built orbital trade beacons that send our goods to nearby trade ships to help people off world in exchange for an airdrop of cash. And to top it all off, our employee Diver made one of the greatest pieces of art ever, a chair. But this chair bears an image of a yak giving birth to a yak who is glowing softly white. As an interesting contrast, five combat drones appear beneath the main subject. And the piece is titled, A Yak's Vision. It is beautiful and perfectly captures our company's love for yaks and uh, uh, helping people, yeah. But this piece of art is way too good for Fazoli's. So we reinstall it in Krankenwagen's room so he alone can bear witness to its beauty. All of this has been possible because of our CEO's dream of helping people. But Krankenwagen had a thought. What if people were more valuable alive than dead? No, that's crazy. That can't be right. But what if it is? When the next raid hits, we're gonna go easier on the raiders and not, well, execute the downed. Instead, we will tend to their wounds and only ended up capturing one. And they died of blood loss. But don't worry, we found another. Perhaps our methods are still too brutal. So what is their purpose for living? There are several organs that you can harvest from prisoners, most of which will kill your patients, but not hemogen or blood. Much like in real life, RimWorld has a shortage of blood donors, and our company intends to solve this shortage. We begin the surgery and obtain one hemogen pack, leaving our prisoner with moderate blood loss. I assume doing it again won't kill them, right? Alright, in their current condition, we probably shouldn't do it again. Aww, it won't let me. We have our new method to make profit, I mean help the world. But our current method of obtaining blood donors is not effective. Krogenwagen gets to work, researching and planning new methods of capturing living blood bags. He invented tranquilizer turrets, which we begin constructing in our most popular kill box. Once the next raid arrives, I discover that these turrets are making my game stutter. Not cool turrets. They still work, and when everyone was put to sleep, we capture four more donors, which fills up our current holding cell. But we could have captured so many more volunteers if we had a larger donation clinic. Before we take on the project of building a larger one, I installed a new tranquilizer turret mod that doesn't stutter my game. But it doesn't work, and now I have tribals spilling into my base. Don't worry, my ace security team will take care of it. How did you survive that? You deserve a promotion, which Krankenwagen won't give you, by the way. With the raiders defeated and my new turrets destroyed, I switch back to the old mod. I'm just gonna put up with the stutters. Now that the turret situation has been, uh, resolved, I can focus on building a new blood donation center. I need to pick a spot to put it. I could build it in the top left of my base, but I would have to mine out the stone, and I don't feel like doing that. The bottom left is also an option, but once again, rock. So that leaves the top right of my base. Like always, there is a problem. It contains a graveyard that predates the time when the company innovated. It would be disrespectful to dig these people up and actually I don't have a problem with it at all. We dug up and dumped the bodies outside our base, and when they were all gathered together, we burned the corpses in a very uncontrolled fire to prevent our colonists from getting a debuff from seeing the corpses. We began construction of the site, despite interference from a trade caravan that decided they were going to be in the way. Despite your distractions, we finished the prison donation center. I said donation center. I want to reiterate that these people are here 100% because they want to help the planet. Oh, and what is this room of the donation center for? Well, it's a secret, so don't tell anyone. Wait, you actually can, as I haven't told you yet, so uh... We began recruiting more volunteers to donate blood, while also having to deal with our fair share of uh, contract disputes.
Security handled most of the negotiations, which unfortunately resulted in some of our donors' deaths. It's actually kind of ironic because they died of blood loss, not from our operations, but from bullets. To further avoid the loss of our donors' lives, we have to improve our security systems in the clinic. Please don't stutter my game. As it turns out, the stutters might actually be gone, as when the next batch of eager donors arrive, my game surprisingly doesn't stutter. Over the next few months, we filled the donation center, and some of its occupants weren't too happy about volunteering. Nevertheless, it was at capacity and blood production was at an all-time high. As we extracted more and more blood, our warehouse was filling up. And things weren't that bad for the donors. Sometimes we even fed them fazolis. Despite our success, we still needed somebody to manually extract blood from the donors, which was time consuming and distracting Kronkenwagen from his CEO duties, like admiring a yak's vision. So Kronkenwagen came up with an idea. We will build new state-of-the-art blood extractors. When donors are placed inside, it keeps them sedated and prevents unruliness all while producing more blood packs than doing the operations ourselves. Unfortunately, prisoners require a lot of food to maintain. With the amount they are eating, our food reserves are being drained. The blood extractors, however, let us use whatever garbage we want to feed them without the mood debuffs. Which means they are getting a balanced diet of uncooked human and insect meat. Word spread of these machines to the donors, and some were not excited. Your complaints have been heard by upper management, and we will take it into consideration. As we begin expanding our blood donation center, building more extractors, and continuously placing patients into the money printers. We emptied the clinic and filled the extractors. Except for slag kill. We didn't build enough extractors, so instead of being unconscious in a tube, blissfully unaware of the man-made horrors being done to him, he has to be fully lucid as we rip the blood from his veins in a haunting situation that he will be trapped in until the end of his days. Over the next few months, we extract copious amounts of blood, filling our warehouse until it is overflowing with the blood packs. We began distribution throughout the world via our Yak distribution network further increasing our already ample wealth. I mean, at this point, we're rich. We are making so much in profit that we had to hastily expand our cash storage room with cheap and easy to build wooden walls so it could all fit. Despite our massive success in blood farming, disaster came knocking. A wild party of pirate raiders appeared, and one of them has a grenade launcher, which he used to shoot a random steel wall? It isn't even ours. Look, I have the option to claim it, so it's not ours. I mean, he's probably just being a silly little guy. When the raiders began their attack, that crazy bozo with the grenade launcher began shelling our wall, eventually breaching it and allowing the barbarians to flood in. It shouldn't be a big issue for our turrets to take out the raiders, but the real issue is this specific turret. Some of the yaks were in its line of fire and were unfortunately hit by the turret. Luckily, none of them died, but it could have been so much worse. Krogenwagen slaps a band-aid on his prized possessions wounds, but he wondered if the money and power that came from this company was worth potentially losing the thing most important to him. He thought long and hard about what his next choice in life was going to be. He reaches a decision. He gathers some yaks and sets out towards the nearby base of the Empire of God to rat out his company's misdeeds in exchange for his freedom and the freedom of his yaks. He even promised the Empire that they can loot the cash surplus of over 100,000 silver they have in their vault. <laughs> Did I say 100,000? I meant to say 75,000. I mean, I honestly cannot believe that I accidentally said 50k silver when I obviously meant 25,000. Katzakrogavagen gathers his yaks, emptying their enclosure. He then journeys forth toward the coast to find a new home for his yaks, disabling the defensive turrets on his way out. After his departure, the Empire showed up in mass numbers. They easily infiltrated the base as the turrets were switched off. They proceeded to wreak havoc, overwhelming the security forces while slaughtering the employees. They lit the base ablaze, destroying what we have worked so hard to build. 
Our company's VP, Mr. Big Bucks, hid inside in fear, as the sounds of gunshots and flames seemed deafening from his hiding spot. Yet he gathered the courage to go out guns blazing and face an almost certain death at the hands of his attackers. But the Empire was gone, and he was left alone, amongst the ashes and the corpses of his employees. On the other hand, Krogenwagen had made it to the coast, and as he sat, watching the sunrise as the ocean breeze swept through his hair, he felt happy that he had helped this world survive winter, beat starvation, and get the precious blood they needed. But more importantly, his yaks are safe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or are a really cool person, you should check out my last video where 32 of RimWorld's toughest combatants fight to the death in the most lethal tournament the planet has ever seen.